But first, my open. I've told you before, being a leader means making tough and many times unpopular decisions. This week, we watched a leader declare a national emergency where one was unequivocally and undoubtedly needed. It was vintage Donald Trump. And the reaction? Vintage fake news left. Within a 36-hour period, we watched the president sign a bill to keep the government open, declare a national emergency because of the security and humanitarian crisis at our southern border. We watched an attorney general be sworn in and watched the deputy, former deputy chief of the FBI, blow himself, the Department of Justice, and the FBI up. We watched the economy reaching new heights, the left ignoring the blackface debacle because Democrats from the Virginia governor to the AG to Joy Behar were all involved. But what are we talking about today? Is there really an emergency at the border? The left is calling it a political stunt and a total waste of money. Some even threatening to take the barrier down if built. Um, you know, would you, if you could, would you take the wall down now? Here. Yes. Like you have a wall. Absolutely. Like knock it down. I'd take the wall and down. You think but make no mistake, Donald Trump will secure our border. The left are lying to you when they say there is no crisis, that the president is concocting the nation's immigration emergency. They object to the president's characterization of the influx as an invasion when they say the effort to protect us is a waste of money and that the president is simply engaging in a political stunt. A primer. Our southern border is overwhelmed by illegal immigration, gang violence, crime, drugs, and human trafficking. In fiscal year 2019, the DHS has already seen a 136% increase in the number of family units and unaccompanied children each month. 40,720 inadmissibles have entered our southwest border in the last four months. Thousands of violent criminals cross that border, endangering Americans. In the last two years alone, ICE has arrested 266,000 aliens with criminal records, including those convicted of 4,000 homicides, 30,000 sex crimes, and 100,000 assaults. And if you don't believe those numbers, just look at the jails in Texas. 186 illegal aliens and 276,000 criminal aliens were booked in local jails between 2011 and 2018. Last year, ICE removed more than 10,000 gang members already in our country illegally. Drugs are flowing across the border, devastating American families. Every week, 300 Americans die of heroin overdoses, of which 90 percent comes over that southern border. In 2019, ICE made over 1,500 human trafficking arrests, almost all of which were for sex trafficking. 20,000 children were illegally smuggled into the United States during the month of December alone. If this isn't a crisis at a border, it's hard to know what is. Emergency is just the recognition of what other politicians have blatantly lied about to the American people so that they could fill their coffers with willing and many times illegal Democrat voters since they have lost the heart of most Americans. So what happens to these people? When captured, they claim asylum, which of course they could have claimed at a legal port of entry. But even then, they're released and given a court date. They don't even bother most of them to return, and 80% of them are not really eligible for asylum anyway, and their claims are ultimately rejected by immigration judges. But they don't care. They're off somewhere in America, maybe in your town, maybe even having a baby, which gives them free access to just about everything. Now, the president did everything he possibly could before declaring the state of emergency. And if you want to criticize anyone, 
criticized Congress, who dilly-dallied since 1986 when President Reagan declared the last amnesty. They are so jealous of the other party, as well as this outsider president, that they refuse to give him a win when their concern should be about giving the American people a win. They refuse to even consider that every day they refuse to negotiate or work on our behalf. 130 Americans died from opioid overdoses, and 90 percent of the heroin comes across that border. The left, however, instead of recognizing the danger to Americans, is determined to do nothing but criticize President Trump. I think all of us will come to regret this. It is not the right way uh, for the president to try and end run Congress. If it was an emergency every time a president of the United States couldn't get what they wanted from Congress, we would be in a constant state of emergency. I think the only national emergency is the humanitarian crisis that President Trump has created at, his, at our border by separating families from children and treating uh, people who need our help inhumanely. Uh, I think this is manufactured. But in the end, the president is right. We will have a national emergency, and we will then be sued, and they will sue us in the Ninth Circuit, uh, even though it shouldn't be there. And we will possibly get a bad ruling, and then we'll get another bad ruling, and then we'll end up in the Supreme Court, and hopefully we'll get a fair shake, and we'll win in the Supreme Court. I can't imagine that the Supreme Court would not support the declaration of an emergency. Given Congress's repeated failure to act, the president's repeated attempt to make the Democrats act, all these presidents have declared national emergencies. Now listen up. I've got news for you doubting Thomases. This president is on firm legal ground. Both the Constitution and Congress have given him the right to declare emergencies as an executive action. Youngstown versus Ohio, 343 U.S. 579. According to Justice Jackson, the president is at his zenith of power here, where Congress has delegated to him the authority, and his own authority is at its maximum. He possesses his own right plus all that Congress has delegated. In these circumstances, and in these only, may he be said to personify a federal sovereignty. She may be the darling of many progressive Democrats, but freshman Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is taking enormous criticism from some in her own party and her own state for her role in Amazon's decision to cancel plans for a huge investment in New York. Here's correspondent Doug McElway. Democrats are often called the party of the big tent, but critics say Amazon's decision to bail on a new headquarters in Queens, New York, has exposed the party's other reputation as a circular firing squad. Why in the world would you celebrate driving 25,000 jobs out of Long Island City? I mean, that is just ridiculous. Amazon said the average salary for those 25,000 new employees would have exceeded $150,000 per year, bringing in an estimated $27.5 billion in tax revenues over the next 25 years, a windfall, especially considering the state only had to give up $3 billion in tax incentives to entice Amazon. But the increasing leftward anti-business tilt of the party helped poison the deal. One Amazon executive told NBC, quote, if you talk to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, it's never Amazon. What this is a celebration of is that everyday people in the community stood up and they wanted a say in what was happening in their own backyard. Polls found a majority of New Yorkers supported the deal, despite Amazon's non-union policy, even in this union-rich city. And see what basically we're left with now. The bombed out cars in our neighborhood. This is not Shangri-La over here. We needed this over here. We needed this. More traditional Democratic politicians supported it too. Governor Andrew Cuomo fumed, quote, a small group of politicians put their own narrow political interests above their community. We wanted to negotiate a better deal. We didn't want to see those on the left, those who are 
anti-capitalist completely kill the deal. It's the latest fissure in a party which is smarting from the controversies of late-term abortion, blackface, and sexual harassment in Virginia, an embarrassing rollout of what some Democrats say is the overly ambitious Green New Deal, and accusations of anti-Semitism within its caucus. Those controversies are all boxes that President Trump may be checking for later use when his re-election campaign gears up. Brett? Doug, thank you.